Hey guys, Virtus here and welcome back to the Unreal Engine 4 beginner tutorial series. In today's episode, we're going to be going over an introduction to uh, blueprints, maths, and we're also going to be introducing you to variables, some of the different variable types, and then we're going to show you how to use those inside of some of the maths functions inside of blueprints. Having said that, you'll be able to, uh, with this knowledge, you'll be able to script some of the more complex uh, gameplay features that require maths. Um, if you take a look at the last episode of uh, the blueprint creation series we used quite a bit of maths to create a scoring system having said that with this knowledge you're going to be able to create stuff like that anyway without further ado let's go ahead and dive in so first things first i'm just going to show you how to create another blueprint class and in this we're just going to do some practice we're not actually going to be creating something as of such uh right now so i'm just going to go ahead and open this up and i'm going to call this test blueprint and i'm going to go ahead and open this up and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go straight to the event graph. Inside of here, I'm going to show you how to create the different types of variables. And I'm going to explain to you what these variables are, the main types of variables anyway. So if we go down to the bottom left hand corner, you can see we've got variables. At the moment, we just have default scene root. However, we can add new variables. So a variable is essentially a dynamic piece of um, um, information which has some kind of value or setting to it that can change. You're allowed to get that value and you can also use it in um, whatever kind of blueprint script you're creating. So let's go ahead and create a variable. So press plus and by default, it will make it a Boolean and you get to choose the name. I'm just going to change the name of this to test one. That's going to be the name of the variable. Now, if you drag the window along and you go over to details, you can see you've got variable name and then you've got variable type. Variable type is the most important bit as you can change it to a whole bunch of different types of variable. So you've got booleans, integers, uh, strings, vectors. These are mostly the main ones that you're going to be working with for now. And these are the ones I'm going to explain to you. So a boolean is basically a true or false value. You can set it to uh, set it to be on or off like a switch, true or false, whatever. And you can also check to see if something is true using like a branch node and so on. I will show you that a little bit later, but for now, all you need to know is it's a true or false value. The next one we're going to work with is an integer, gen uh, integer number. This essentially allows you to store some kind of number. Like in the scoring system in the previous video, I showed you how to add one each time the player steps on an object. So this integer number can change. You have a default value and then you can change it with the script, uh, the, with the blueprint script. The next one I want to show you is a 3D vector. A 3D vector is essentially a variable with uh, three different numbers in it. These three different numbers are going to be, um, these can be used for a whole bunch of different things. Uh, if you wanted to, that's going to be X, Y, and Z, you know, because it's a 3D vector. It's going to allow you to change, um, you know, set information for height or rotation or scale or anything like that. That's what you might use a vector for. And the last one I want to show you is a string. A string essentially allows us to hold a line of text. Like, you see where it says right click to create new notes? This is actually going to be contained probably within a variable or something, and that's going to be a string. It allows us to contain text, and then we can put whatever text we want to. If you see down here, it says please compile the blueprint. Once we do that, we can actually change the text that goes inside of there. Or if we go to integer, it allows us to change the number inside of there. If we go to boolean, it allows us to change it to true or false. Keep in mind, you will need to compile each time you change the variable type. But you can see now it's a boolean, I can check it on or off for true and false. And then if I go to integer, compile, I get to choose a number. Go to string, I get to choose text. And then if I go to vector, I get to choose all three types of text, just like that. So that's pretty much the main types of variables that we're gonna be using. Now I wanna show you how we can actually use some basic maths um, with these variables. So we can actually change the numbers, change it to true or false, and so on and so forth. So let's go ahead and uh, set up a basic event inside of our Blueprint Actor. So right now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and create a quick box. I'm gonna go ahead and use the normal cube and then I'm going to go ahead and create a box collision. This way we can detect when the player actually touches it. And we're just going to scale this box so it captures the whole object just like this. Perfect. Now we're going to go over to the event blue pro uh, event graph. And then from here, we're going to go ahead and create a event for begin overlap for collision. 
Once we got this basic collision, we can actually go ahead and uh, do some maths. So I'm just going to go ahead and drag our test blueprint in into the scene just like this so we can actually see what we're working with. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to work with our integer. It's the most simple. I'm going to go ahead and click that and if I go ahead and compile it, I can change the default value to 1. So let's say we wanted to change this. We wanted to increment it. Uh, we wanted to multiply it, divide it or whatever. We can do that quite easily. So the way to do this is just go ahead and drag the uh, variable into the screen and get and you can use either get or set so get allows you just to receive the variable and then hook it up into another node and set allows you to change it so let me show you that so if we go to get we've got this basic variable holder it's just a value and set will actually change it and we can hook this up to the event so let's go ahead and do this so if we drag it up to the begin overlap and then the set we need to hook up the uh, test one bit here, uh, the very start to some kinds of maths fun uh, some kind of maths function. So let's go ahead and do that. So just drag it out, and we're going to type in integer plus integer. This will allow us to add a number. We got integer with division, multiply, and minus. If I wanted to add an integer uh, an integer to that, I can do quite easily. So at the top here, you have your uh, your initial value. So that's going to be test one, and then you got what you want to add to it. So that's going to be something like five. So now each time I go ahead and collide with that box, it's going to change the value by five. It's going to add five to the initial value. So let's just go ahead and check that. I'm just going to go ahead and type in print string. This is going to allow us to display the string onto the screen. So if I hook this up and put the end result into the in string, it allows us to convert the integer to a string and then display it onto the screen. So go ahead and press compile, go and press play, possess, and then let's go ahead and walk into it. So I press it once, it says 6, press it again, it says 11, 16, 21, and it's going up by 5 each time. Um, the initial value is 1, so it went from straight from 1 to 6 and then to 11, and so on and so forth, but you should be able to get the general picture. And if we wanted to, we could go ahead and uh, change that to like a multiply node instead, integer, so integer plus integer. Uh, let's go ahead and scroll up and then we can do multiply. Here we go, multiplication, and we can do pretty much the same thing. I just want to show you you can use your you know your normal math skills to do this. So if I hook this up, and then this time it's going to multiply the initial value by the second value. So each time now it's going to multiply the initial value by five. So instead of it going from one to six, it should go from one. Uh, 1 to 5, 25, 5 times 25 is 125, and so on, and it just keeps going up, and up, and up, and up. Uh, that's pretty much how the basic integers work. That's pretty simple, really. Um, you know, you can try out the other functions like minus, divide, and so on, and so forth. But for now, that's pretty much all we want to show you for uh, integers. Next, you've got your booleans. So, let's go ahead and change this variable to a boolean now. And we're going to keep the name the same. We're going to go ahead and compile so it changes. And we're going to set the default value to 1. In here, we can go to get or set once again. Get will get us the variable. And set will allow us to change it. So if we go ahead and press uh, and hook those two up, set the set. And we can uh, if we do this and we hook this up, it's going to allow us to change the variable. It essentially just allows us to check, uh, to pretty much turn it on and off really, which is quite simple really. It's absolutely lovely. So go ahead and do this. Default value is going to be 1. And then we've got print string. And then we, if we wanted to, we could just go ahead and convert the boolean to a string, so true or false. If we go ahead and press play, and then run into it, it's going to tell us what our boolean value is. It's true, and it's just going to stay like that, which is quite simple. Um, if we wanted to, we could use like a branch node to check the condition, whether or not um, a value is going to be true or false. If you don't hook up this value in here, like I did just then, it's going to stay with that variable, but it's going to set it to true or false. So if we leave it false, the way it is right now, press play, dive in, and then you hit it, it's going to be false. If we set the set value 
to true, it's going to change it to true and so on and so forth and that essentially allows you to turn it on and off quite easily and you might want to do this um, for stuff like doors or whatever and you want to only be able to trigger it once, you might use a boolean value to do that. You can use the branch node um, which pretty much just checks whether or not a condition is true. I'll let you play around with that. Um, but that's pretty much everything for some basic maths that I wanted to show you. Um, I pretty much just want you to go ahead and play with some of the different uh, integer types. You know, play with the different integer, uh, not integer types, sorry, variable types. Um, play around with some of the maths functions. Most of it's pretty simple. I've shown you integers, how they work. I've also shown you um, booleans, you know, the true and false stuff. Strings, that's pretty much text. You won't really need to change that, but you can change it quite easily if you want to. Um, if you want to do that, just go ahead and chuck it in there, drag it in, and then you can set it to something else. You just type in the text and it will change it, and then you can display the new value and so on and so forth. It's quite simple, really. Um, so, thanks for watching. Like I said, just go ahead and experiment with it. Go ahead and check out the Blueprints Creation series where you can see where we use some of this Blueprint uh, stuff to actually create our own assets. Uh, so, thanks for watching. Comment, like, and subscribe, and I will see you next time. Goodbye.